Well, first and foremost, the first thing they could do is acknowledge the problem. Um, that substance use at, this, at the height of this crisis is in fact a problem in that it could um, stifle, if not totally derail, adolescent development. Neurologically, and we know that all drugs have many things in common. Um, they release dopamine in the brain. They can hijack a whole host of neurological and physical development. Um, it, you know, academically it gets derailed, some of the things we talked about. Um, if you see marijuana, if you see excessive or alcohol use at all, um, we're always surprised, and maybe not so surprised, that parents, you know, before they come in and their child is experiencing serious dysfunction with substances, usually there were signs first. And those signs either went ignored or they were rationalized. And parents and family members have their own, um, almost their own kind of denial and rationalization and intellectualization and suppression of realities. These are all defense mechanisms that we very closely align with the disease of addiction. That the individual is, you know, uh, you know, looking in the mirror who's 89 pounds and 5'10 and addicted to heroin and says, one more bag of heroin, I'll be okay. I mean, that's a level of denial that is life-threatening. Now, denial is a defense mechanism we all have. Human beings have them. When they become so dysfunctional, when a doctor says, Mr. So-and-so, one more shot of alcohol and your liver may, be, may explode. Oh, doc, you're just kidding. I mean, that's a level of denial that's life-threatening. When the person who's addicted to heroin or methamphetamine or cocaine or alcohol, you know, says, I just need one more fix and I'll be okay. That's a level of denial of reality. It's probably the last thing they need. But physically and psychologically, they believe that that's what they need. So when you're talking about drugs like heroin, and this is part of the series, The Heroin Diaries, all drugs run the potential, I sound like a commercial, but all drugs run the potential for psychological dependence. Remember, at the crux of substance use, this is a mental disorder, according to the American Psychiatric Association. Okay? It's in what's called the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. It's a book in our field in mental health, and we're in the fifth, fifth edition. You'll find everything in there that afflicts the human mind, from mood disorders to schizophrenia and other psychotic disorders. The chapter right in the middle of those two is substance use disorders. So the young man or young woman running down the street at four in the morning to sell stolen laptop computers or stolen jewelry from their family is literally not in his or her right state of mind. So um, now heroin, including alcohol and including benzodiazepines like Xanax, Clonopin, Ativan and Valium, which we're seeing widely abused also, bring with it not only a psychological but a physical dependence. So it's really, really important to know that people that use benzos or alcohol and opiates, including heroin, are in the throes of not only a psychological obsession and compulsion, but in the midst of a physical dependence. Now, what does that mean? Without more of that drug, um, their body's going to go into what's called withdrawal. They're going to experience the flu-like symptoms. Um, in fact, heroin withdrawal, you're going to wish you were dead, but it probably won't kill you. Okay? It's a uh, uh, it's very uncomfortable process. But alcohol and benzodiazepines, that are, those are considered life-threatening. But getting back to heroin, the user will not probably physically cannot consider moving on in any recovery process until he has been or she has been physically stabilized through a detoxification program. Now, there's lots of ways that we could do medically assisted detoxification, and I'm not a physician, I'm a clinical social worker, but LICAD and a host of other agencies work with agencies and hospitals that help with detoxification. So when we talk about the biopsychosocial model, the physical, these are in order for a reason. One's physical um, health needs to be stabilized first before we can begin work on the psychological and the social. So it's really important that people who are addicted to opiates or heroin um, get referred to a detoxification program so they can be stabilized or through medical assistance, medically assisted detoxification. And there are certain pharmaceuticals that are available today to help with that. Um, that's really, really important to understand that people who are far along in the continuum of opiate or heroin abuse they can't just stop. Their body is going to experience this physical withdrawal. So first is acknowledging the problem, getting them to healthcare facilities like LICAD, and we are very rich on Long Island in Nassau and Suffolk in a multitude of different services. We are literally one of uh, a multitude of agencies that do substance use counseling, mental health counseling, and of course our county and local hospitals and medical centers that offer detoxification. Um, first to get assessed. You know, um, people ask me all the time, like, um, you know, how do you know if someone's abusing these drugs? Well, we ask, uh, and we also have to ask the right questions as professionals. 
Um, very often, uh, you know, there are other diagnoses that mirror substance use. You know, people not being able to get out of bed, uh, people being uh, a lack of interest in things that used to interest them. Are they hung over from alcohol? Are they withdrawing from heroin or are they clinically depressed? So it's really important that um, you bring your loved one in to have what's called um, a psychosocial assessment. We want to make sure, unfortunately, but we have to ask the right questions to see is this a substance induced issue or is there some other mental health go issue going on, i.e. depression or i.e. a mood disorder. So to ask the right questions, and there are a multitude of professionals that help that. Beyond that, um, it's what's called screening, brief intervention, and referral to treatment. So LICAD, even though we are OASIS, Office of Alcohol and Substance Abuse Services licensed, we don't do treatment. Our job is to get individuals and family members to treatment providers. So we do the initial assessment, and if it is heroin, how many bags are you using? Um, for your viewers who don't know, tolerance is a big part of substance use. Tolerance is more of the drug is required to achieve desired effect. What is desired effect? Um, for a lot of opiate dependent people, it's to numb the pain and to stave off the sickness that withdrawal brings. So um, one bag of heroin easily becomes three. Three easily becomes six. Six e easily becomes a bundle, or what they call 10 bags of heroin, a bundle. Uh, we had an individual here just this week who was doing up to 25 bags of heroin a day. I mean, if you think that a bundle goes between you know, 80 and and $100, you're talking about a significant amount of money that's being consumed nasally, intravenously, and that costs a lot of money, and of course, the toll on the body and on the mind is significant. So individuals often come in here. Now, we're not affiliated with law enforcement at all, so um, we're healthcare professionals. What we're here to do is offer relief to the user. They are in the throes of that obsession and compulsion. Um, many people swear on a short stack of whatever in the, in the morning, saying, I'm never gonna do this again, and they're high by noon. And it's not because they're liars. It's because they are in the midst of this psychological disorder, obsession and compulsion around compulsive use. So when we send them to a detox, when we send them to an inpatient or outpatient, inpatient would be more of a residential setting. So we get them medically stabilized through detoxification. Then they enter a residential setting in an ideal world. I mean, when you're addicted to the most powerful narcotic on the face of the planet, taking a time out from your home, your social group, and uh, more times than not, that social group is also involved in the same kind of behaviors. It's giving that individual a five, 10, 15, 20, 25 day time out so they can really consider, is this the path I wanna continue on? So I think early intervention is key, if I could just summarize. Um, not ignoring the signs and symptoms. Uh, we think of like the, the, the house fire. Uh, as soon as you see smoke, do something. Don't wait till you see the blaze. As soon as you smell smoke, as soon as you see uh, alcohol abuse, as soon as you see blackouts, as soon as you see paraphernalia for smoking marijuana, as soon as you see little baggies or empty or little granulates of powder around, um, that is the smoke that, or usually the indicator that there is in fact some kind of progression going on. At the height of a national crisis, I don't think parents could ignore that any longer. W again, we are one agency, but we are very rich in resources in Nassau and Suffolk of substance use and mental health service agencies. Get your loved one to have an assessment and hopefully um, uh, that individual will be engaged enough that they will be open to receiving some kind of help, whether it's detox, inpatient, outpatient, or private treatment.